grab a bottle or snap a tab. It's time for Antebrewer South Georgia Beer Report. South Georgia's first craft beer podcast with Ryan and Danny. This month, Ryan and Danny sit down with John from Brackish Beer Company to talk about this new brewery in St. Mary's, Georgia, and sample some of their awesome beers. They blast through a three-minute, three-pack taster and put John through yet another fun-filled round of Cask Me Another, followed by the Craft Beer Dad Joke of the Month. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Episode 9 of Antebrewum South Georgia Beer Report. I'm Danny. And I'm Ryan, and we have a special guest today. We have John from Brackish Brewing Company, or Beer Bra- Company. Brackish Beer Company, Brackish yes. Beer Company. So, uh, we're excited to have him on. We're gonna tell you all about what's happening in St. Mary's, Georgia. But first, Danny, what you drinking? Well, Ryan, all three of us are drinking uh, samples of a local favorite, uh, mead from the Buzzery in Boston, Georgia. I have what's called Black and Blue, which was a black currant and blueberry mead. Mm-hmm. How about you, John? Uh, this is the apple apple cider. Uh huh. Apple believe. cider. Mead. Yep, yep. Yes. Um, and it's it's uh, very fragrant, very aromatic, and uh, it's it's delicious. It's yeah. Got that hint of sweetness, which is really 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 appealing. They know their they know their stuff. They make good mead, and and we're kind of drinking this on a on a bit yeah. of a, a sad occasion where. Um, some of you may know this if you uh, follow the buzzery, but they had a uh, tragedy um, recently, and uh, um, they lost uh, one of their family members and, and somebody who's very critical to the uh, whole operation. And so uh, send out your thoughts or prayers or good vibes for the family, and we want to, um, you know, let them know that they're in our thoughts. You know, it's hard to, to lose anybody, but it was certainly in a, kind of a sudden manner. And, uh, you know, they've recently reopened. They wanted to continue on. And so what we figured we could do is support them. And actually, Danny and I are planning on making a trip out there this week to try uh, one of their new meads. and The Reds mead. Yeah. So, so anyways, uh, Buzzery. For, uh, for Andy. Yes. Mm, cheers. Everybody go give the Buzzery your support. Yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, great mead. And so let's go ahead and thank our sponsors. Who's, uh, who's helping this uh, float along today? All right, as usual, we have Five Points Fine Wine and Spirits, which is providing us with our three-pack review for later. And, of course, Daniel Opal of Opal Designs, who uh, made our logo, and I'm wearing our T-shirt again. Whoop! Um, And make sure you check out uh, Five Points this weekend. I hear it's a holiday. What holiday is it? It is Memorial Day weekend, and so make sure you check out Five Points if you're uh, watching this before Memorial Day has already passed. And, of course, we want to remember all of those uh, who served and have passed and uh, thank them for their uh, service. Absolutely. So uh, enjoy yourself. Have fun. Be safe this holiday weekend. But for now, let's talk of some Brackish beer. Um, Great. Tell us about Brackish Beer Company. Brackish, brackish beer. That sounds gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brunch. Well, Brackish Beer Company is a concept that's been – that started – way back um actually early 1990s wow <laughs> to be to be for sure to be exact um i've been a home brewer since the early 90s of my early 20s and um you og brewer <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's and, been and um ago. you know this was uh, uh my wife well then my girlfriend and i I would travel up to maine and new hampshire that's where all of her family was from and this is the early 90s and there was this explosion mm-hmm. of craft beer up there uh, it's where it started in the united states and um you know so we'd go up there and visit and we'd uh, visit some of the, the places and go to the brew pubs which were very popular then and i happened to be we were in portsmouth new hampshire and i was walking out of the portsmouth brewery mm-hmm. uh, which is a, a great brew pub in downtown portsmouth new hampshire and right across the street there was a home brew supply shop First time I'd ever seen one. It's called Stout Billy's. So <laughs> I was up at that point. Cool I was man. already a beer fan, and uh, so we. I walked in there, and I, I mean, I just could not believe that you could make your own beer, you know. And so I spent a couple hours in there talking to the guys, who were absolutely fantastic, and I bought my first homebrew kit, and um, carried it back to Georgia. We were living in Atlanta at that time, and that's where it all started. 
Wow. Uh, and and, and um, the uh, Brackyard Ale, which is our flagship ale right now, the first one that's been distributed, is uh, is actually a kind of a distant relative, a very very close um, recipe to the very first beer that, that I brewed wow, as, awesome. as as a home brewer. Um, so we. Um, Obviously, many, many years passed mm-hmm. between that point and the time that I really decided to get serious. Everything changed when we... I was working as an engineer through um, in South Carolina right after college, and then I moved uh, to St. Mary's, Georgia, which is where uh, my wife grew up in high school. And uh, she has some family there, and so we moved back to St. Mary's to kind of uh, help with a family business and uh, started up a new part of that family business, which is when consulting and d- different things. Still brewing a lot. I uh, still had this dream. And uh, then things got really busy with my first job. And uh, so about eight or nine years went by. Mm-hmm. And then about uh, three and a half years ago, I said, it's time. It's time to do this. Yeah. Nice. And uh, we'd seen some growth in St. Mary's. We'd seen some things that were happening. And so we sat down, my wife and I sat down and we started talking about the concept of a, of a, of a microbrewery. And uh, now we've been, uh, you know, we th- went through all the licensing, all the regulatory stuff. We have um, in St. Mary's, interestingly enough, when we started uh, looking at the, uh, at how, how we're gonna obtain our local licenses to eventually get all the, the state and the, our federal license, we started looking and talking to the city, uh, city people and interestingly enough, there were no city ordinances that, I mean, they had all kinds of ordinances for selling alcohol and, mm-hmm. and for distributing and for, you know, liquor stores and all that kind of stuff. But there was nothing in the books about actually making or manufacturing alcohol. That's a, so, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> well, at that point, I thought it was going to be a bad thing. But it, it ended up being a good thing because we were instrumental in helping to write the new ordinances. That, that does sound like that, a good thing. That it, now you can go into the city of St. Mary's and you can you can request to get a, a, a brewery license. Cool. Nice. And That's so awesome. so it was a great process to go through with the city of St. Mary's. It was just fantastic. They were fabulous. City council supported us all the way. And so... Uh, we moved into our space, which is actually a space. Well, we didn't move into it. We are, I already owned the piece of property, but we used it for our uh, for my for the first business. Mm-hmm. It was our offices, and we did some work out of there. And uh, so, what we did is we went into the space. It's about a fifteen hundred square foot space, and we stripped it down on the inside <laughs> so we could bring in our pilot equipment and uh, start brewing. Very good. Put in a small lab. We've got uh, our pilot equipment in there now. Uh, that we're brewing with and we've been brewing for about two years and we have been distributing for just under uh, almost a little over six weeks now Uh, yes yeah and uh, we were excited because i think danny had found you on the internet and we made a connection and then we started talking hey we're excited we found this new place saint mary's and then just this week a bunch of aldosta spots got some of that brackyard ale yeah and yeah and that was you know super exciting because well, like we were saying, it's like you guys are, we are the South Georgia Beer Report and you guys are true yes. South Georgia Beer. And, and I, mean, I want to thank you guys so much for the work that you're doing because our, you know, we're Brackish Beer Company and our, our slogan is get lost with us. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, you know, we really thought about this and, you know, the area that we live in is kind of a dead area for, for, for craft beer. So we, we wanted to come in and, and not be the enemy of, of, the, of the lager, you know, commercial lager beer. We wanted to come in and, and tell people, hey, come and get lost with us. Why don't you try this and see if it's something that you like? And so that's our, that's our slogan. And, I mean, it's going to be a privilege and honor to get lost with you guys over, here, <laughs> over, the, over the next few years. We're so good at getting lost. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, that's, uh, yeah. I thought you meant uh, here today. I was like, well, we did start with me. <laughs> <laughs> we might be lost by the end of this. I was curious uh, about uh, how you guys landed on the name. Brackish? Oh, yeah. it's when you talk to people in our area, uh, we live and breathe and fish in and survive off of Brackish Waters. Hmm. Uh, it, brackish Waters is where the, it's the intersection of the uh, sea, of the ocean, with the, um, with the waters from the St. Mary's River, all the different uh, rivers that are in the area. And that brackish color, that brown color, comes from the, the decomposition of all of the earthy materials that come from that river. And it, and it blends in with the, um, with the ocean water mm-hmm. right there in the, in the St. Mary's River, right down, in front of downtown St. Mary's. So, you know, that whole area, the coastal area of Georgia from, from Savannah down to where we are in St. Mary's is all brackish water. 
And so, you know, we, we, we went through several names, and the second that we said, hey, Brackish, that's, that's it. Yeah, it's like not it. only water, it's, it's the life of the area, it's what people identify with, yeah. uh, whether you fish in the water, whether you swim in it, whether you're, uh, you know, it's just... Well, it immediately it's, it's kind of takes you to that kind of unique yeah. regional... Yeah. Like, and, and, and Danny, I don't know, Danny hadn't been to St. Mary's, I've been to St. Mary's a couple times, but, you know, that whole coastal area is just very unique, all the way, you know, St. Mary's... Yeah. Jacksonville all the way up to Savannah. So yeah. It's got like a whole different environment that yeah. you just haven't and, seen. And and when you're navigating in brackish waters, that's when you're getting lost. So are you a fisherman? <laughs> so myself, if I had time, I think I would do some more fishing. Not really. I'm more of a, if I have time, if I have some time, I'd do more of some golf. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I do enjoy boating tremendously, taking my, uh, my 13, well, yeah, he's 13 now. Wow. 13 year old boy on our little uh, little boat we take him out on the Fantastic. river and uh, do that kind of stuff and Fantastic. Not, not a huge fisherman myself but I certainly enjoy the, the water very good uh, yeah so you already talked about kind of your flagship and I understand you brought some beers Danny and I were excited to hear about yeah. that so yeah. what's your brewing focus what type of beers are you okay well uh, yeah I'll give you a rundown uh, and maybe the best thing to do is give you a rundown on how we're going to kind of roll out some yeah, yeah, of yeah. our flavor of our taste of our beer uh, we started with our flagship ale, and that's uh, Brackyard Ale, as I mentioned And that's earlier. the one that's in town, correct? That's the one that's mm-hmm. in town, yeah. That's the, that's really the only one that we yeah. I, I know for a fact you can get the Brackyard Ale right now at Craft on Draft. Okay. And um, Bill from Savannah is our salesman. We've mentioned Bill many times. Uh, said to us on Facebook, I think, that... He suspects that they will have it at Blue Cafe, Blue Pub, etc. Awesome. Wow. Um, I was just at Blue Cafe yesterday, and it was not on tap, but they could just be waiting for a keg to kick. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't imagine that his other popular accounts would turn down a South Georgia beer. Well, so I would imagine Friends and Steel Magnolia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and that, that's fantastic news because, to my knowledge, mm-hmm. Valdosta is, would be the first place outside of our local area to... To get some of our beer. Because we begged. <laughs> Bill said you guys were giving, um, or you were earmarking uh, 10 kegs for this area to okay. start with. Yeah, because I believe those kegs have to go to Atlanta, actually, and then the, and then they get shipped down here or something like that. So it's yeah. Georgia. It's the distribution area, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so, um, Which so, we're grateful for, despite yes. its issues. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. It's, it, and it's getting better. <laughs> Much better. Compared, this is true. Yeah. When we first started this process... We weren't. We we wouldn't even be allowed to have tastings. That's right. At at the brewery, we couldn't even. We couldn't. We didn't even have the use of a tour, you know. And that came soon after we started looking at our licensing. Really? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, in the last three years, things have have really changed for the better. Yeah. So and we, hey, and, in the last three months, things have changed yeah, for the better. And with, and with this legislation that has passed, hopefully, be signed into law in September, I believe. September first. September first. September yeah. That's uh, that's going to be a huge huge thing for us. Um, we got off topic. We were talking about yeah, new, new beers. beers. So, so Brackyard Ale, it's a, it's a Kolsch style ale. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've been brewing this for a very, very long time. Uh, it's always been one of my most popular beers with my friends. You know, I'd brew all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I would brew this, it would go fast. Very good. <laughs> always. It's a very crisp, refreshing beer. And it's a beer uh, that kind of, you know, your, your more novice beer drinkers yes, can get into. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's, that, it's that introductory step into getting lost with us. Hey. That was uh, something I saw uh, on one of your guys' Facebook posts that was kind of funny and, in a way, sort of impressive. Um, you guys had posted a picture of taps at a restaurant, presumably in St. Mary's. Mm-hmm. And the taps were literally like uh, Yingling, Bud Light, Miller Light, yes. Coors Light, and Mick then, Ultra, yeah. and Brackyard Ale. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, good, good for you. For, but I mean, that's what you got to do to yeah. get taking, in there. Yes. Taking that slot from a place like that and is awesome. I, yeah. I'm going to tell you that our local restaurants and our local bars from St. Mary's to Kingsland to Woodbine to uh, the few places that have it in Brunswick and uh, Golden Isles and a few places up in Savannah. I mean, the fact that they're, you know, that they took a keg off of their normal tap to, to put this on there. And I mean, we're just, just so blessed that that's, that that's happening. And we're getting a great ration from the beer. It's good. You know, it's a it's a good easy drinking beer. I use um, uh, it's it it is made tr- like a traditional Kolsch style ale, which is you know from from Cologne, Germany. The original Kolsches are mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. can't call it a Kolsch beer. It's a, it's a Kolsch style because right, of yeah. the because it's not made in Cologne, but it's a Kolsch style ale, and uh, I made it a little bit different in that I put a little bit of a wheat 
uh, component. I want to make sure I said wheat correctly. And uh, <laughs> so not to confuse any, any of the listeners. And so that what that wheat component does is it, uh, it really makes it uh, a, a very kind of very summer beer. You know, it's about 18% wheat. And so it makes it very refreshing. It gives it a little bit of character, a little bit of haze in it. Um, and it's it's a uh, it's a it's a good it's a good nice. solid right. I got, solid I got, I got try drinking cold shell. Now you you okay. brought, you said you brought kind of a yeah. a different version of yeah, it. Yeah, Danny had tried the uh, the brackyard ale that we sell at the at the restaurants and bars. And uh, coming up here uh, this morning, I I, I um, put some of our brackyard ale that's been in a um, in a uh, in a bright tank. And so it's not filtered and it's not, you know, so it'll, have, it'll be slightly more hazy. It'll have more of that, that kind of yeasty little bit uh, of, of goodness in it. So maybe give it a little idea. And it is a beer that we, we, we are going to start uh, marketing, not, not soon, but it'll be a kind of unfiltered uh, version or Brackyard uh, X or <laughs> whatever, whatever name we decide to come up right. with it. Uh, it's, uh, and it, to me, it's one of my, one of my favorite drinking beers, um, you know, because it's got the a little bit of that, that flavor to it. I think when Sweet. I first can got, we try? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. of course. I'm uh, when I when I first got into craft beer, how many ever years ago, mm-hmm. like I kind of resented Kolsch's and not resented, but I would shy. I'd go for the crazy IPA or the crazy sour, the big stouts. As I'm coming full circle, like I'm more and more excited about like a good Kolsch or a good summer drinking yeah. beer yeah. or something that I can get a six pack of and just drink it in the backyard with my wife or something, you know, like I think that, um, I think that it's, uh, it's good to have just the, uh, the classic drinking beer, you know, first well, you want you the know, craziest hop head imperial stout. So, yeah. So as you can tell, it's got a little bit more of that haze. It definitely has more mm-hmm. a little bit of the citrusy aromas that, that mm-hmm. you get from 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 the yeast itself, which is a Kolsch style type of yeast, um, and um, so compared to the uh, compared to the brackyard that you tasted yeah, yesterday, yeah. it should have That's a little great. bit just a tad more fruity, nothing yeah, too crazy. It's got the same backbone. Every you know, it's always the same beer. It's just uh, it's not it's not filtered or sent through a through a. Uh, hmm. uh, it's got filtration. it's got a little bit mm-hmm. more. Well, I haven't had the original, but it's definitely got that. The, the wheat stands yeah, out. The wheat yeah. character really stands out. Yeah, the wheat out. and the, the and a lot of that, a lot of that's the, the, the yeastiness of it, and uh, it's, it's tasty. Yeah, it's very. Tasty. It, it is uh, uh, surprisingly different, which is um, it goes to show you how important uh, filtration process yeah. can be, and how how different it makes the beers with these uh, crazy northeastern style IPAs these days <laughs> completely <laughs> look like milkshakes you know yeah yeah <laughs> well I, I am by no means a, um, a beer snob I mean I think that, that there's a beer for every occasion mm-hmm. whether it's a commercial beer or a craft beer or whatever it is I mean there is a, there is a beer for every occasion but uh, I, I do tend to go for some of them my, my my favorites are Cole styles blonde ales and uh, and and Probably over my whole home brewing career, brown ales, mm-hmm. a good, a just a, and not a heavy brown ale, just something that's got that that has a, a good body to it, but is, is drinkable and has a good uh, good backbone to it. So it's very good, very good. And I could this is this is a beach beer. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. it's a, it is it's a, a hanging coastal, outside beer. It's a coastal beer. It's it, a beer to the, take on the boat. A little bit of nice citrus. I mean, it's 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 one of those sorts of beers. So I'm, I'm the filtered one is as well the, yeah. the standard rack. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm, I'm, then that, I was going to ask you how, how what you thought of the uh, of the. That's the, great. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about what's the uh, the beer scene in St. Mary's like. The beer scene in St. Mary's is assuming there is a beer scene. Is well, I mean, you're starting a beer scene. Is changing drastically. Now we've always had the we have a huge navy base there, mm-hmm. uh, Kings Bay. Kings Bay, mm-hmm. and so we've always had you know it's a drinking town because of I mean you know the navy and everything. That's I've heard sailors like a drink yeah, now yeah, yeah. and then, uh, and because of the the navy influence, we've always had like some of the you know they they travel a lot and they want to have their beers on tap and lo- in the local bars mm-hmm. and so you know we all we always had the Guinnesses and the Basses and the and those types and. And I'd say in the last three years, I, I would say that at least 
half of the restaurants and the bars have started carrying the the what, what at that point was considered the local stuff. Yeah. You know, the stuff from Jacksonville. Jacksonville's got a tremendous beer scene right now in terms of craft beers, numerous, uh, you know, Intuition and, uh, yeah. and all them. And then, uh, and then some of the beers that were coming from Savannah and then with the explosion of the beer scene in Atlanta with all the different uh, stuff, you know, it, it, you know, once in a while you'd see a tap handle of this and then you go into the, into the, the better uh, liquor stores and, and you can buy the stuff that comes, you know, it's from Atlanta. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. It's a low, it's a, it's a Georgia beer. And um, so Jay's Tavern, downtown St. Mary's, which is about th- three blocks from where I live, mm-hmm. great place to go have a have a beer and excellent food, a great place. When I started talking to the owner there, he said, this is, this is gonna be a game changer for us because for years, we've had people wanting to come in, to, they come in our because we get a good- we per- talked about that we all get a the good, time. We get a yeah. good number of tourists that go to St. Mary's right. because of Cumberland Island and everything, it's, a, great, it's a launch in, way. The first gateway thing they for ask lo- for is- First thing is they want local, local, local beer. beer. And yeah. then you say, oh yeah, we've got it, it's from Savannah. You know, or it's from Jacksonville, and they'd be like, "Oh, that's not really local." You know, we were looking for something that's made in the air. We talk and about that said, all the time. And he like, said that now when we travel. We that's the first thing I yeah, want from a and, place, and that's the market that exists today, and that's what what people are wanting to see. So it's been a game changer for them. Yeah, you know, they've sold a number of kegs, and it's people first time walk. I mean, obviously to the regular clientele, but it's to the to the tourists that walk in. Yeah, they want to get a bite to eat, and they want to try the the local beer. I lived in uh, Jacksonville for a year, and I was beer manager at a store, and we were known as being one of the best stores, particularly for having all the crazy, just weird foreign beers and stuff. But the number one selling beer I had by far every week was Intuition I-10. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, every, yeah. every week, mm-hmm. without fail. Just yeah. the local that's, stuff. That's their thing. Nuts. That is the I local mean, beer in Jacksonville local stuff. right now. Yeah, and it is. And they've done a great job with it. It's a great tasting beer. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and oh, by the way, uh, uh, when we do our... Uh, post uh, brew day samplings, which is one of the best parts of <laughs> this job, um, we call this the, the day destroyer. Brand yeah. brand because if, uh, if it, especially if it's been a hot day, and it's gotten warm or maybe something's gone where we've had to do a little bit of extra work to get everything up and running <laughs> for it to end the brew day, you know, one of these turns into the second and then the third. And, <laughs> they, you know? Beers tend to do that. They, they, uh, yeah, they kind of crawl into each other sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We both yeah. brew. Oh, so okay. we understand that. Yeah. He, Ryan, and I have destroyed several days while brewing <laughs> and sampling beers. Yeah. And speaking of you just the... kind of destroy while you create. <laughs> what is there's mostly no, destroy. There's no energy gained unless it's lost somewhere else, right? So uh, I think that's uh, science. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the changing beer scene in St. Mary's. Tell us about your future plans to have a tasting room or a tap room. Okay. Something of that. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's a 1,500 it's a square foot space. You're working and, on it. Um, what we're looking to do is uh, do just, just some basic remodels here over the next few weeks mm-hmm. and, and maybe do a couple of special events during the summer. Um, but so that probably, soon, like yeah, in the next few weeks? Yeah, but just do not with the full blown out okay, kind okay. of kind of opening or anything. Just because we do want to have a, some presence in terms of you know right before the Fourth of July and those things. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. then and then really buckle down and and get things moving and and have something you know um, available you know end of summerish where we have a tasting room that's open at you know, regular intervals, regular hours, and uh, and then by September 1st, that's when we want to be ready to Absolutely. jump on it because that's when the legislation, or the, the new law goes into play, and uh, we want to be able to serve the customer that wants to come in and just buy a pint. That's yes. fantastic. Because why would you want to do that? I, I think there's a uh, trip to I think the, I beat two, that trip horse. to the coast for us here pretty soon. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I beat that horse last month. I was pretty... You can't talk about Adamant horses. about SB eighty five. Not not in Camden County. You know they got the wild horses there. No. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. How about yeah. another year? To yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so and that's good uh, good timing because I was I told you how we would roll out the beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, our next beer that we're gonna be rolling out for distribution will be our pale ale. All oh, right, super dope what? pale ale. SDP. Super dope pale ale. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Pale ale. SDP. It's, it's just good. It's refreshing. It's a super dope. And uh, does this one have wheat in it too? <laughs> <laughs> super dope. It was super dope. <laughs> yeah, and as you 
can tell these have no labels or anything yeah, on them because dark. I did this morning. So <laughs> that's, I had to guess. Yeah. Yeah. If that was the pale ale, I think he did something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would not be good. Uh, oh, bottle uh, pen? Yeah, we have one of those. Somewhere. Always. Okay. This one, uh, we brew. It's, you know, basic pale, pale malts. And um, then we moved. Gonna get lost on here. <laughs> Beat ya! I got the better bottle. Right. <clears throat> so. Super dope. Super dope. Super dope. good. My carbonation technique worked okay this oh, morning. Yeah. I was in a rush to get out of this morning, so a little worried that this wouldn't be as carbonated as it should, but it's looking pretty good. We'll survive either way. That citrus pops off. Of yeah, we use a good bit of Amarillo hops in this. Um, it, it's not what you would define as an IPA by any means. I, I, we don't even know if we're going to get into the IPA craze yet. <laughs> we're going to kind of let that one, uh, we're going to sit on that one for a bit. Like, there's some point where you had to have your blonde, your pale, your IPA, your stout, your porter. I think those days are gone. You should do mm -hmm. what you... You, you as a brewer know this. Yeah. Do what you like. Do what you want to drink. Yeah. And yeah, you need to have stuff that a variety for people to like. But like, there should be no law that like every brewery has to have an IPA. No. You know, like it shouldn't be. Um, you know, I just think I I like an IPA. You know, when it's uh, when it's a time. You know, I'm not a beer snob, but there's a beer for every occasion. Uh, this is a and this one is a, a kind of a, a medium body. Mm -hmm. It's not terribly. Uh, out there, it's about five and a quarter, five and five point two five, I believe, percent yeah. al alcohol by volume. Uh, we use a lot of Amarillo hops in it, and it's uh, we we do. It's just a single natural fermentation process. Uh, we don't rack it in a secondary fermenter, mm -hmm. and so we just let it sit. And I think that that just gives it a lot of uh, of earthiness and and, and 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 goodness to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's. Yeah, some people, uh, some people that, that drink it say that they they, they taste a little smokiness in it. Um, mm -hmm. I do I do occasionally get that. You know, our palates <laughs> tend to change over time. Uh, a little bit of smokiness and uh, I get a little I, smokiness, but I think that's my I, genes. From working with the bees <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's a uh, it's got a nice crisp crisp body. Yeah. And we've been working on this here for the last like uh, several months, rolling out enough kegs that. Uh, uh, we, we use Savannah distributors, and they're going to be picking up uh, some of these uh, here pretty soon, and uh, taking them to some of the bars. Here, and... mark a few for Valdosta. Uh, right? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And again, pale ale is another one of those beers you just. I like to get uh, by the six pack, and I like to. to it's funny the uh, the IPA the thing. There's just so many too these days. I mean, obviously they're in demand, but like yeah. there was a rate beer thread. The listeners know I'm. Ryan and I both use rate beer a lot. Yeah. And uh, there was a thread recently that was like, post your three most rated stats. Or your most, um, your three most rated styles. Everybody styles was. Uh, Everyone yeah. from America, almost literally every person from America, uh, yeah. the top yeah. rated style they had was IPA because you just can't not run into IPAs. And that takes away from yeah. like, in, that's not even counting like Imperial IPAs, yeah. black IPAs. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, that's red, just normal red IPAs. IPAs. I, I think it's a it's also a phenomenon of social media as well, um, because <clears throat> if you you think about the true beer aficionado, that's going to take time to to rate a beer, to go on to um, and, and do something like that. That's you know, us. They, so be careful yeah, what you say. Yeah. No, <laughs> that, that's fantastic. But you know, they it's it's a social media cause type of phenomenon. You know, they'll go in and the, the may, might be their favorite beers, but I think there's a whole slew of people that drink beers that don't necessarily rate it that you know may or may not be yeah oh right. yeah and i mean i love a good ipa when it's time for one i mean you know that breweries fantastic. don't make their money off of but, rate beer nerds they make their money <laughs> exactly. off the people that are drinking yeah. Although, unta yeah. everyone uses untapped these days it seems yeah. like and i and i have i mean we've i've experimented with ipas in the past of dry hopping and, and doing different things and i think we have a great base for mm -hmm. yeah. IPA. oh yeah you know, yeah just we just have to move move on and, and at some point we will i'm sure you know, but it's not. Uh, it, it, it's it's not my favorite style of beer, but it, it I know I know that it's it's in demand. Yeah, as well, this so. is true. Mm -hmm. um, I think 
you, you sort of talked about this as far as what you're rolling out, but like, are you looking for brewing four or five flagships and having a few, you know, kind of smaller um, type seasonal variety type thing? Or are you looking to just kind of do that's get a, the big ones? That's a tough distribution. That's, a, that's a tough question to ask because. We have been extremely organic, and mm-hmm. what I mean what I mean by that is that we roll with the decisions. I mean, we had a plan, and our plan is not 180 degrees from what it was, but it's about 90 degrees from what it was when we first got started. You know, you learn things as you go, and um, I've had the good fortune of having a lot of good relationships with other breweries, uh, guys that have that, that are already in there and doing stuff yeah, doing yeah, yeah. well and they've all kind of told me the same thing is don't don't get ahead of the game just kind of see what what your market where your market takes you to but sounds like good sound advice yeah yeah but i mean we do i mean we as, as i was mentioning with the the rolling out of our beers you know we've got uh, our future plans are expansion and we're talking about within three years is to bring in equipment uh to to produce to meet the demand that hopefully we're going to have as always, you know, uh, investors uh, are a little skeptical to spend five hundred thousand dollars on a new brewery and new equipment when they don't know what the marketing numbers or the demand is going to be. Yeah. So we're in that phase right now. So far, everything is looking really good, and so that's our. Within a year, we'll be making a decision as to you know what size, whether yeah. it's whether it's ten barrels or thirty barrels, or at that point, and then putting on a new building to expand in our or, or our current facility. And then, but in terms of, of, of just the near future, I'm talking about the next three three to six months, we'll be rolling out the, the pale ale. And then we do have the pecan porter, which is, is a seasonal. I mean, that has to be a seasonal because pecans are seasonal. Yeah. And um, so we locally source the pecans from a guy that's uh, uh, right there, just close to us, uh, just a few miles away. And he provides us the pecans. The next set of pecans that we'll have available to us will be in September. And so we'll start brewing that and try to try to get it as soon as possible. Sounds like a good time to try it. Yeah. The, for, yeah. Oh, there we go. For when the um, for when the uh, the weather starts getting chillier, you know. We, and Definitely the fall beer. But so this I will try to get myself in the fall. I'm beer. like uh, I'm, I'm thinking like, football. I'm that guy that'll drink a barrel aged imperial stout on the beach. So. <laughs> I ain't as worried about seasonal. You're that guy. <laughs> You're that guy. <laughs> I have legitimately drank, not a barrel aged version, but in the past, I've legitimately drank cans of 10 50. Yeah, you were telling me just that. Just hanging out on the beach with friends. You said that last time. Didn't you say that last time? Yeah, I've said it in previous episodes at least. Because I remember talking about like how you were wearing just a Speedo or something like that. Because <laughs> I think if you're drinking cans of 10 50 on the beach. No, this one here. I do not own a Speedo. We, I, I already mentioned, we, we source the local pecans. Uh, use a little bit of uh, local honey as well. Good. And um, I, I, don't know, I, I don't know if you're aware, <laughs> I don't know if you're aware of this, but the first pecan tree um, was grown in St. Mary's. <clears throat> what? Yes. And I know that, and I know the world? that in the United States. Gotcha. It, uh, somehow it came over Where on a boat. Where did it come from? The, the nut came over on a boat, and some guy in St. Mary's <laughs> decided he was going to, or at that time, St. Mary's, he decided he was going to plant the tree. We got a little marker in downtown showing Ooh. where the tree was. So while this That's area, crazy. while this part of the, while this part of Georgia is, is now more renowned for yeah, yeah, the pecans, yeah. the, the first pecan They're tree. All yeah, a yeah. bunch, right? Yeah, we, I, my, my house is in a pecan field. Your house is in a little pecan field. We so do. is the name going to be something like, First, first we, we pecan porter or something. We've had a lot of uh, arguments. <laughs> <laughs> we've had a lot of arguments about the name, and uh, I'm not going to go there with some of the ones that <laughs> don't because yeah. you realize the Brewers yeah. Association yeah. announced that they will no longer announce winners that have offensive names. Yeah. Okay. What? So if you win a GABF medal uh-huh. and you have an offensive brewery or beer name, they will not announce your name anymore. Which is kind of funny. So it's just like just, Brackish Beer Company offensive name pecan porter. Yeah, they just that would be funny actually. Offensive, offensive name, but yeah. like there's a you can call entire, it like that joke. There's an yeah. entire brewery that just opened in uh, north of um, Atlanta. I don't remember what city. I think North Atlanta, somewhere Georgia? in the Atlanta area in Georgia called Left Nut Brewing Company. Oh, I heard. And that. I'm like, well, they're not going to be able to win. They're not going to be able yeah. to be announced at any awards anymore. 
But this seems so, like a legitimate what was the historical yeah. St. Mary's and thing. So, yeah, and so what we do is we, we, um, we take the pecans, we crush them, and then we uh, do a roasting, a triple roasting process. We have a very small oven in our brewery, and we roast it right there. And, it's real close uh, to a smoke border. Like it's got a lot okay. of smoky. Yeah, it does. Well, it's uh, we get um, we use chocolate chocolate malt yeah. in it, so it gives it a that, that little roasted, really it's roasted. Tasty. It's really and then tasty. and we and we we roast the the pecans. Some of them we get a little bit of char on them. Yeah, you know, and so you get a little bit of that that that. Uh, little I mean, it's not like a ro- burnt flavor. Rosh beer. It's not a smoked no, no, beer, no, no. but it has a little. And again, it's not a. I wouldn't say. I mean, it's a full bodied beer, but it's not like a crazy you know oh, yeah, super top, heavy. heavy you know which which porters don't have to be you know porters is this a, is something i like to drink while i was watching football or something yeah like and um and you you definitely get the the uh the uh pecan aroma and the the, the flavor in it especially when you burp you know, <laughs> a, little, a little bit of that pecan <laughs> pecan essence that that yeah. comes out and uh, we use uh, like i said we use the honey the um the the roasted nuts and um a little bit of brown sugar. What did you say was the name of the pale ale? Super, Super dough. dough. Super dough. Super so dough. this doesn't have a name yet. Not yet. All right. No, no we've we've uh, we'll be rolling this out in the fall, end of the fall. Uh, so we got some time to, to think about. Hopefully that will be hitting. Yeah, we did. We had yeah, a yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's um I had we uh, we had a Christmas party at, at our at my house and I was serving up some of this pecan porter and it and it. Um, <clears throat> Went People fast, like, and it happened to be a nice cold day as well. Yeah, so it was uh, it was perfect for for that occasion. Very good, sweet. Well, we gotta get going into our other segments, but last chance to. Uh, well, actually, no. Before I ask that, I should mention that you guys are in the process of building a website. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. And yes. we'll have some kick ass merch available. Yes, our uh, our current website right now. Uh, which is brackishbeer.com, will take you, right now it just leads you to our, our Facebook page. Um, you know, and the, we're getting you know, a tremendous resp- response on Facebook. Uh, but once, once we get all the graphics done and get the, the online store set up, uh, you'll be able to go to brackishbeer.com and order t-shirts and koozies and all the, nice. all the, all the paraphernalia. People I like, like the, I like the slogan, I like the get lost. I think okay. that's a yeah. good slogan. Yeah, and the, and the, our, the Brackyard Ale, um, um, Brackyard Ales logo is the red right returning um, triangle. I forgot. I was going to ask you. You posted on. You guys shared or commented on Instagram or something. One of the things we posted, and put hashtag red right returning. Red, yeah, red what right returning. I have no idea what that means. Red right returning is a is a uh, catchphrase that sailors have used for years, and because uh, you have the red triangle, the triangle when you're. When, and so when you're coming back into port, you're on the right. You want the red triangle on your right. Oh, okay. So that as you're coming back into into port, so you're Got on the it. left. Yes. Opposite of driving. This is why I can't drive a boat. It's like all <laughs> the oceans, Europe. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got so, it. Okay. So as you're coming back into port, it's red right. That red. It's that's the slogan. It's red right returning. Got so it. The, 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 like the brackyard. Triangle. Yeah. Yeah. So the brackyard. Is the red right returning uh, navigational symbol is gotcha. actually what you call them? Yes, uh, markers, right? navigational markers. Mm-hmm. And Fantastic. before we dive into our five-point sponsored three-minute review, what's the last thing or one more thing you want people to know about Brackish Beer Company? Um, support your local craft beer brewery. Amen. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of hard work. Um, it's worth it in the end. Um, uh, we are going to grow organically. We're going to grow with our community, and we want our product uh, to help the restaurants, to help the bars, to help the tourism, to help uh, everything that's happening uh, in St. Mary's and and beyond. Yeah, and I will say this: John probably wouldn't say it, or maybe he would about his beer, but all three beers tasted good. Beers I'd be proud to be drinking in the restaurant and, and awesome. having craft beer, and and he John was great about like. Hey, uh, we got a podcast for uh, South Georgia beer. You want to uh, hop on, you know, come. And, like, within a couple of weeks he was here and doing this right now. And, like, we appreciate that. Not, people are not always responsive to be like, hey, would you 
come to you know this crazy guy's house and be interviewed with by this <laughs> this uh, crazy guy in this, this oh, no, a band. Band. beautiful downtown historic downtown yeah. Boston. Well, I think my uh, my wife is uh, Karen. She's the the marketing person for us, and she immediately saw what you guys are doing. I yeah, mean, she saw that she saw the the. The value of what you guys are doing in our area, and so it's it's important. I mean, it's oh, uh, I appreciate well, it, it's a community. You know, we talked about that earlier. Is you know, it, there may only be you know, two hundred fifty people that listen to it, but every one of them loves good craft beer, yeah. and they want fresh beer, and they're pumped to hear that you're coming to Valdosta, and hopefully soon Thomasville, and maybe up to you know, eventually you're expanding out, and you know, we there's there's plenty of room for everybody to to get on board. But, but like I said, we appreciate you coming and sharing your beer and. We're excited to have you in Valdosta. So, cheers. You know, you know what we Thanks always get? Cheers. 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 Thanks for the beers. The beers are good. We really appreciate it. Salud. We keep forgetting to mention that we have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Antibroom. We still have two, I think. I haven't even looked. subscribers. But one's your subscribers. Danny's mom, as we always say. And Adam, or... I don't know if we... Adam was... Eh, it's Adam. <laughs> he's, Nobody knows who Adam is. Well, Adam. He, Adam is a, a fantastic guy. I'll, I'm going to tell a story about Adam. I was at Hunapu's Day a million years ago, and I happened to get in line behind Adam. And, Which is the best place to be in line and, at a beer and, festival. But Adam, he... You know, this is what probably my first major beer festival. He kind of gave me some advice on what to try and stuff like that. Just a super nice guy. But he found me later. I was in line to use a portalette and he's like, dude, I'm going to crack a super rare Cigar City beer that I, I just managed to get a bottle of. You want to come try this? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to come try it. I mean, he found me. He just remembered me from line, from the line. And and then we kind of struck up a, you know, on he's on Rate Beer too. And so um, I've seen a couple times since then. Just a nice guy and, you know, He's uh, supporting what we do, so we appreciate him. And we appreciate Danny's mom, who's a very sweet lady. Yes. She hands out candy at Tubaween. Oh, so. she can't come to Tubaween no! this year. No! Get her down. She's so sad. Tuba- you might have to take place. Tubaween. Oh, uh, I think I get I got Tubaween. Tubaween. Yeah, yeah. My, okay, my, uh, what you do. my tuba studio. Okay. Uh, we have a tuba ensemble. But all the tubas get together and play. And every year in the fall, we do a Tubaween concert. Where we do all Halloween and like movie themed mm-hmm. uh, pieces, and um, families and kids of all ages are welcome to come and encouraged to come in costume. And it's become one of the uh, Department of Music's most popular events. And uh, there was uh, well over, we printed 250 programs last time and they were gone. And oh, yeah. The kids didn't even take them. So there was three, 350 people there. Well, in fairness, I took 175 of them. <laughs> you might have to hand out candy. Can you dress up as a uh, good witch, Ryan? I dress up only as a bad witch. All right, all right. Ready? Right. Oh, do I got get my name. timer out? I got my timer. That's my job. We talked about this last month. But okay, let's be clear on this. One minute from the poor, or one minute includes well, the poor. It, well, we got to find so, a rule. Yeah, for you, our I, need, I need to know the. the I think rules. John's rules. looking a little worried. Just to think, make sure I that it, uh, I can follow them here. And, I think it includes the poor, but. Like last time we had Southern Juice, which we really liked, and so we talked about it. All right, how about the poor is not included? Okay. So it's a minute to talk about and rate the beer? Is yeah. that what it is? Well, you don't really have to rate it. Just, you don't have to give it like just stars give your or opinion like of that. it. Yeah, yeah. Opinion and just what you think. Just try it and, and talk. Okay. Shoot from the hip. Show we, the, 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 the fun part is how fast it is. All right, so talk about... All right, thank you to Five Points for providing the... This is the Five Points you think 3 T Super Review. So this We is have uh, three one, brand two. new beers. You can get them uh, at Five Points. They're not local or anything, but they're available at Five Points. Perfect for Memorial Day weekend Absolutely. and going into the summer. Go brand on. new brewery um, out of New York, but brewed in Wisconsin. They contract sure. brew. Yeah. And it's a really interesting concept. Uh, these are so new, in fact, they have zero ratings on RateBeer.com. But they now have one each because I already rated them. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> they have, in, they only have, a, <laughs> anybody watching on YouTube is now potato. seeing my cat, Potato. So this is they big. do have some check-ins on Untapped, but not a lot. You know, most beers are like in the thousands. And the, they're all Rattlers. So basically, don't let her hit that off, Ryan. Uh, Basically, uh, beers mixed with like fruit juice and stuff. Yeah, hence the slightly lower alcohol content. Yes, and yeah, these very... ones are also all mixed with tea. 
Mm-hmm. They're T Rattler beers. All three of these are T. All right, let's get them going. T. You're talking too much. Rattlers. You're cheating. Well, I won't. So when I tested these that before, uh, when I poured the beer out, the last little bit was like this sludge with a bunch of tea. Hmm. Yeah. And so instead of us getting clean samples, I'm going to mix them in because they do all have, um, like this is a wheat beer, so it's okay to mix it in. There okay. are varying opinions on that, but in my yeah. opinion, wheat beer, let's mix it in. Mix it in. All right. This one is called, uh, oh, by the way, I never said the name of the brewery, Owl's Brew. Rather, this is the Blondie. What's the name of the brewery? Owl's, Owl's Brew. Owl's. Not to be confused with Dr. Owl. Nope. That's my, my nickname. That's your, yeah, I remember story. that from your earlier podcast. Yes. Uh, Dr. Kind of Owl's bright. Nano Brewery and Tube Emporium is the my, my home oh, brewery. Okay. Uh, the, the, again, the tube. Uh, tube, uh, tube, tube jo- yeah. long okay. story. Yeah. This is the Blondie, which is a wheat beer brewed with spices, blended with black tea, citrus juice, and agave nectar. Because I've already had these, and I know they're on the sweeter side and inf- infused with tea, I have my Jekyll Brewing Company mason jar. Nice. For okay. my proper glassware sort of tea. We, uh, yeah, we get a we get a lot of the Jekyll products where we are. Yeah, they're, they're pretty close too, to you. Yeah. yeah. All right, the Blondie. Here we go. Ready, go. Go. So, and this is definitely uh, hazy. <laughs> Smells like citrus and tea. You know, it's a, it is a sweet tea rattler. You know, I love all Arnold Palmer's. Yeah, and it does kind of have an Arnold is, Palmer taste. Yeah, yeah I didn't think about is, that. It's very refreshing. It's great. It's not too sweet. I was expecting it to be a lot more sweet. And um, it's fizzy. It's, it's sweet, got that but the fizzy. tea cuts it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it is. I think an alcoholic Arnold Palmer. <laughs> I mean, I really think that's like I don't think I could describe it any better than that. It's it, it's pretty tasty. I mean, I, that's I, I make my own. You know, mix my sweet tea with my lemonade, and uh, you know, it's it reminds this me of that. But like you said, the alco- alcoholic version of it. Black tea and citrus juice. Black tea is probably black tea is what like normal tea is made out of, right? So that's probably yeah. why it's tasting normal. It's kind of it's got that kind of earth. Oh, can't talk anymore. <laughs> it's a... Hurry up, Danny. Oh, no. <laughs> I meant pour the next one. Well, I guess you need to clear it out. All right, what's next? Save the amber one for last. Next up, Alice Brew Radler Wicked Watermelon. <laughs> wow. This is a wheat beer brewed with spices, blended with white tea, white fruit tea. juices, and agave nectar. So they use different teas? So this one's white tea and... Um, uh, watermelon and this was the one when I poured the whole can into my glass it was like filled it's with logic. tea flakes hmm. and I think I forgot to well it at least you know that they're making it with real tea. yeah I mean that's that's kind of the the gig yeah. well yeah. it was filled with something at least where's this from New York <laughs> I think they would have figured Georgia their, would have came up with the sweet tea beer their contract yeah. brewed in Wisconsin but I th- I want to say the company was in New York definitely has a carbonation in there. lots of carbonation so it's a. Uh, All right, this was watermelon. It's watermelon. Start it's bad. It. I smell the watermelon. That's for sure. That is this one. The blondie didn't have a box, so we just got the can. This one's the green one. This is the uh, watermelon. Is the green one? Yes. All right. Timer is going. That's like tea and uh, Jolly Ranch. This one is yeah yeah. This one is definitely sweeter to me and maybe. It's very sweet. Yeah. yeah. This is. Uh, this is Ooh. something that this is something that my wife would really like. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Karen, if you're watching. Somebody who wants to yes. uh, take. It's note. definitely. We've had at least one viewer the whole time, so I'm guessing that's somebody one of us knows. Because we get a bunch that Nobody come I and know. go. Watches this we get a bunch that come and go, but there's been one there the whole time. So hi, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> um, watermelon. Yeah, I mean it's. It's a fantastic taste. There, you know, there, there is a type of person who would really enjoy this. These would be really if good. if you like sweet. Yeah. Like, these would be really good to make um, summer beer. Stop talking. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> this isn't about this one in particular. There's potato again. This is gonna be an awesome YouTube video to watch back. <laughs> <laughs> these would be awesome to make beer cocktails with. Like yes. when I worked at Proof in Tallahassee before it was a brewery. Um, they would take uh, whatever wit beer they had on tap and mix it with citrus vodka 
and a little bit of Sprite mm -hmm. and make, I don't, I don't remember what they called it, but it was shockingly good. And throw a little citrus or watermelon vodka, a little club soda or something like that. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a great Saturday afternoon drink, you know? Yeah. And I mean... <clears throat> You know, with the with the low alcohol content on it, you know. Yeah, what is the ABV of these? All of these three, are three, three, point, point, three, point three percent. Three point eight. Okay. So this is like so, I mean, it's three point low. I mean, it's, it's it's about as low as you can find. I want to say a, Bud Light is four. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. less than Bud yeah, Light. just slightly less than a, than a Bud Light. In Colorado, they used to have three two beer. I'm from Colorado. Have yeah. you ever heard of three two beer? And no, the yeah, three two beers, what you can get on Sundays in the grocery store, okay. and they had to make it so the alcohol level wasn't above three two. Yeah, it was like a law. Okay. You know, yeah, very weird law. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, my friend's dad would motor down to the Safeway or the King Supers and get his three two beer because he, you know, he just wanted the yeah, you just the had low to, alcohol. And, but you just had to get twice twice as much of it. You had to drink. <laughs> you had to drink like thirty two of them. Yeah. yeah and just be near a bathroom. You take your rascal scooter down to the. CVS. <laughs> <laughs> this has which one's this one? The amber color. This is the. Uh, it's called That's My Jam. Owls Brew Rather. That's my jam. Amber ale blended with uh, Darjeeling tea, hibiscus flower, lemon peel, I can immediately fruit juice, strawberry. and agave. Immediately smell the Darjeeling. Yeah, it's a much more pungent tea, and it's I can yeah. definitely smell. Ooh, it. Yeah, start the timer. I remember this one being. Oh, timer. I remember this one being very. It has tea. a kind of a guava esque color to it, which yeah, is, it is really interesting. Grocery store guava juice. Yeah. It does kind of smell like jam too. And that is this, that is That's extremely sweet. Wow. We are a big fan of beer puns. So. Who is a big Who's a big fan? We, we, you and I. Yeah, I like beer puns. Oh. I thought you were going on going for a jam. That's my jam. That's my jam. <laughs> Beer puns are your jam. This thing this is, is this thing is jam sweet. This is this is jam packed. <laughs> I could spread this on toast. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I think it's good. There, there's if you if good. you like sweet drinks that you don't have to think about much, the, the this is right up your alley. But you know what? It's it, it's truly. I mean, it's a fantastic product. I mean, all it's the, a new market. Yeah, beer and tea. I mean, it's. Who would have thought? People love sweet tea. So, you know, I used to joke that I wanted to do some sort of beer blended with wine. And all of my ideas for names are like pun names. Like, uh, I, had, I had them all figured out at Bye. some point. Like, doing, <laughs> kind of. Weird. Doing like some, uh, like a stout mixed with Merlot and calling it Beer Low. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> Keep working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a whole bunch at one point. We, uh, uh, you should listen to our making episode because we talk about how we uh, are going to visit after we go to Piedmont. We were going to visit Making Beer Company, which of course is a pun in and of itself, making beer. And uh, we suggested a whole bunch of beer pun names because all of their beers are like making history, making love, making movies, making. And then we drunkenly told Detail. them all to the owner <laughs> that night. And I don't, I don't think, think he, he was impressed. I don't think he liked them. Like, you guys can do a collaboration in town and call it Making Friends. It's so obvious. <laughs> Speaking of which, Piedmont just did a collab with Cherry Street. Did they really? The alley. In Atlanta? The, uh, uh, Cherry Street's yeah. Atlanta, isn't it? The alley, like next to their brewery, oh. is Cherry Street. I'm trying to think. I'm still trying to think of wine beer puns. Like I, I'm hung up on that. I was trying to think of something with rosé. I uh, just came up with brosé. We <laughs> we got to move on, brosé. <laughs> We're gonna take our uh, pecan porter, mix it with merlot. That'll be a merlort. There you go. <laughs> merlort. Malort. Oh, there's a not brewery so you've in Atlanta. Started, you've Malort. started a whole new industry. <laughs> Oh gosh! If I ever had the money to like start a nano brewery or something in Valdosta, I might just have to do all pun names. Just call it Beer Pun Brewery or something. Beer Pun. Patent pending, thieves. Uh, I think there's a beer I've had called Hot Pun. That's our wolf. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's called Insert Hot Pun here, yeah, and they call like it that. Hot Pun for short. But will you dare divert from your tuba theme? Oh, 
So that's true. Yeah. When I was that I very moved. small Venn diagram of tuba <laughs> ponds and beer ponds, <laughs> we're right there. I uh, I actually moved to Jacksonville for that year because I was going to open a brewery. Actually, um, oh really? On, on Amelia Island, that was the plan. It just never happened. Okay. Very, very early stages. You've been close to St. Mary's. I moved moved there. there. We're 30 minutes away. In some sort of like alternate universe, you guys are competitors. Yeah. Yes. I moved there just to get my foot in the door. What time frame was this? I moved there in uh, summer, late summer, early fall 2012. Okay. Because there has, um, there was, there's a brew pub there now, uh, but I think they're they're still... I think they have some beers. Some of Caribou, Caribou. Uh, well, Caribou has been there for several, oh. several, several, yeah, several years. Yeah, several years. But they, they, they. Um, I, I'm to tell you the truth. I know very little about them because I haven't tried it. I oh, they do. We go down there all the time. Uh, they, they do like, um, turnkey beers. Mm-hmm. It's like a truck just pulls up and puts wort in. Yeah. Yeah. And they're awful. Ex- exactly. Garbage. Oh, okay. I'm well, very politically friendly on this podcast normally, but that place shouldn't be serving beer. It's yeah. terrible. Okay. <laughs> Wait, so like... No <laughs> offense. Yeah. Yeah. There's a truck this. that just is like wort and comes in and just puts them in. They drop some yeast in. And I guess you in. just ferment it and then That's let, it, it. let it ride. That's it. Okay. Yeah, I walked yeah. in there. I wondered how the process worked, but I, had, I didn't know that that's how, how it worked. That's but if there's another group up there, no, that's cool. Yes, there is, and they have some pretty good-looking <laughs> equipment, and... Uh, I, I know that they're. Uh, I'm not sure if they're selling their own beer yet or not, um, but they've been they've been open as a restaurant. And, uh, I left it like a cat sitting out, and the cat was trying to rip into it. That's what cats do with cat uh, By the way, you know what I they don't. So are they? They're open for sure, or you just they were about to. They're open. they're open for food. Okay. Yeah, but just and their equipment the is there. It's a, it's a fantastic setup. They have a. It's all, you know, it's very, very good. nice. By the way, do you guys know what I clean my tuba with? This is going to be a bad pun. Uh, a tuba toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I fix my tuba with? A tuba glue. Tuba four? No. <laughs> a tuba four. Tuba. <laughs> a tuba glue. You know what you make your tuba into a sandwich with? What? Tuba I'll, fish. I'll, I'll take a little of the uh, SDP. A tuba fish? You know a tuba fish sandwich. What? Don't you ever eat tuna fish? See, tuna. Ryan, the pun of the previous jokes was that it was a tube of toothpaste. No, I get the pun. You don't need to explain the you're pun. Stre- you're stretching it with tuba, that's, tuba that's fish that's sandwich. Speaking of time for cast it, me another. Yes, it's time for cast me another. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what happens the, when you the, the play podcast a tuba and you smoke? <laughs> What's that? What happens when you play a tuba and you smoke? What? Tuberculosis. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> I literally, oh, right. I, can't, I literally I can't smoke to. because of my job. You get not that I you want got my to, brain going on the tuba. <laughs> I'm still thinking of the wine beer things. All right, here we go. Cast me another one of our most famous segments where we well, ask. I say most famous. We only got four segments. So cast like, me another where we ask smart beer people dumb, dumb beer, beer questions. questions. That's right. That's right. All right, and we've catered no right them. or wrong answers. First thing that pops in your head. All We've right. catered them to your brewery and your area. We tried to. We Danny f- told me you were a, your Facebook. Danny said he thought you were an avid fisherman, so there's a few fish ones. But I'm there gonna, was a lot of I'm gonna try to work sailing some golf. and fishing posts. I'm going to try to work some golf, golf ones in, maybe. Okay. Since you like golf. All right. First one. Best and worst sea creature to add to a beer. <laughs> Eel. Eel is the best or the worst? Worst. Right, Eel would the be best? the worst. The best would have to be maybe a, a, a shrimp. Ooh, a shrimp, shrimp flavored shrimp 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 beer. beer, which we did. St. Mary's that. is famous for the rock shrimps, by the way. We so did that, have that. I could like, see that. I could see might that. Might be a marketable uh, item there. there we did go. have that like Old Bay beer, that Sweetwater. Had and several beer. oyster beers. By the way, they posted that they're having that Old Bay beer on tap again at their next anniversary party, and it says in parentheses "one year old." And I'm like, is it just still the same cake? Anyway, oh <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Name a beer that you think could tame the wild stallions of Cumberland Island. <laughs> you guys thought long and hard about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell. <laughs> well, if, it, if it's going to tame them, it's going to keep the flies away from them, so it'd have to be something pungent. So it'd have to be an IPA. An IPA, very good. Yeah. And Do you know about the wild? You don't know about yeah. the wild. A double, a double is, IPA. You it, mentioned it earlier. It's like a national sea. It's a it's a it's a national seashore. So it's a, it's owned by the federal government. Yes. And you have to take a boat over. There's a ferry that leaves from downtown St. Mary's right at the dock, 
It takes you to Cumberland. But it's a cool place. There's ruins of an old mansion, and there's these wild horses that just walk around. Yeah, their uh, horses were brought there centuries ago, and these are all descendants of those guys. And, and they're very uh, tame, as I remember. Yeah, and the, and the, the Carnegie's uh, had a lot of uh, influence on that island during the, the times of the Industrial Revolution mm-hmm. and built their mansion mm-hmm. out there. And then it burned down. And so the ruins are... are That's the problem with mansions. They always burn down. (laughs) All right. Since you've gone out on a limb and you've not named your coastal brewery after a pirate theme, what is the worst pirate theme brewery name you can think of? Oh, jeez. We joke often about how many bad pirate themed breweries there are. I don't know. Uh, Yo-ho-ho and a bottle of... Beer. <laughs> uh, but what did but what did what would the beer that's in the in the bottom of the pirate ship be called? I guess it would be a, it would be more like a wart that they called just, rum. The beer, oh, yeah. oh, and a tankard of ale. A tankard of, a tankard ale, of yeah. ale. Yeah. I, I was recently in the Bahamas and in Nassau. When you get off the boat, there is one craft brewery right there. And of course, it is named Pirate Republic. There you go. Uh, okay. Well, they can get away with that. They're in the Bahamas, right? So. I'm sure they have real pirates yeah. who drink there from time if, to time. They get off their cruise ship. But if, it, but if that, but if that, <laughs> if that happened in St. Mary's, then uh, I think you'd have some serious issues. With <laughs> Remind me sometime to tell you the, uh, the. Maybe I'll have to add it for uh, a, a pirate craft beer dad joke. I'll see if I can work it in between now and then. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. Okay. If I were to pour any beer... Yeah, well, let me let me rephrase this. I'm, this is off the cuff. So, we're at a golf course. There's a hole. What beer would you dr- want so bad that you would drink it out of the cup? <laughs> the ninth hole. This is any beer any in the beer. Whole world. Any beer you'd want, but you got to drink it out of the the cup. Ooh. You got to get on the ground. Yeah, well, the straw. I'm, I'm I'm not going to go with one of my beers because that's obviously going to be the first that's, choice. That's the first yeah. choice. So I would, I would, everyone I would, always finds a way to work their beer in, as yes. they should. So, so yes, I would. I, I would go with like a, a, a Sammy Smith's brown ale. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, very good. Yep. Classic. I mean, very it's good. yeah. It would have to be poured right from the the the, the whatever twenty two ounce or twenty yeah, ounce bomber. We can raise bomber that. and pour it right we, in there. We uh, have give a little me a golf course out there. Give me a straw. <laughs> give me a straw, and uh, I'll be good to go. <laughs> All right. Best lawn game to play while drinking Brackyard Ale. Best lawn game. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, um, Bags. You know, no. It would have to be a, a, a like a, a summer like beach volleyball. Beach ball. Oh, good, yeah. good answer. Good Definitely. answer. You're hot. Top you gotta... gun. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Brackyard Ale. <laughs> Shirtless Tom Cruise. Inappropriate song selection. Yeah. I, was, I was thinking more Bruce. of the, the advertising would be on the, the opposite <laughs> gender. But, uh... <laughs> true, true, true. All right, here we go. Beer associations. You name the brewery, the specific beer, or the type of beer... That first pops into your head when I name the famous person. Okay, so you're going to name someone famous, and yep. what type of beer they would drink, or the or, or the brewery that or the specific brewery. Up to you. No oh, rules. Beer style. Beer style. Name beer style. Beer, style brewery. Beer. Whatever you think. Yep. Okay. All right. Populous popcorn peddler, Orville Redenbacher. Oh, um, I think that would be uh, Yingling. I, I, I'm thinking, you know, kind of north, north, uh, western. That yeah, you'd pr- you probably area. like some Yingling. Yeah, yeah. All right, Island Bayern Rich Boy, Thomas Carnegie. Oh, okay. You kind of uh, stole my thunder earlier with that mention of him, but go uh, ahead. Okay. Um, I would say he, he, he had that the mansion would be, to burn down. I, I would think he would definitely want something overseas. So, you know, you'd think something like Fuller's ESB or okay. you know, something that's a... Uh, yeah, you know, I could see him wanting something European. Yeah. Yeah, okay. something something British, you know. English. Yeah. Seafaring sot and abrupt author Ernest Hemingway. Oh, geez, that's that's got to be mass consumption. So I'm thinking Natty Light. <laughs> 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 you, you're probably right. He, whatever he could get ahead of. Yeah. Uh, spinach sucking studly sailor man Popeye. Oh boy, green beer Irish. Um, with a special blend. I don't know how many beers with spinach in it, but it would have to be... A, I bet it exists. A, then you're looking at a harp. 
Okay. You know, but yeah, that's, have that's, have, I like the, the flow but it, of logic. But it would have to. That's have, a lot better than we usually get. <laughs> okay. It would have to have. Uh, it would have to be dyed, obviously, with a little bit of green food coloring. So. All right. The speckled geek actor extraordinaire Jeff Goldblum. Oh boy, quirky beers. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Let's go for a quirky Georgia beer. Um, SDP. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Work it in. That's yeah. it. <laughs> I feel like. Um, uh, Jeff Goldblum is the um, guy from Jurassic Park. Yeah. yeah. Do you not oh, yeah. know who Jeff Goldblum oh, yeah. is? No, I'm not good with famous people's He's, names. Uh, but uh, uh, I feel like he would drink... Independence Day? Independence. He would drink uh, one of the things out there right now that's like really, really super uh, crazy. Like like the brew dog, super strong beer served inside yeah. of a taxidermied rodent. Because of that Jurassic Park quote, he didn't... <laughs> You stopped. Uh, you away. kept thinking about if you could instead of thinking about if you should. <laughs> Whatever that quote is. So Danny basically applied Jeff Goldblum's Jurassic Park theory to craft beer. Yes. It's what we do here. Not so much about if you could. Never thought if you should. Exactly. That's more like William Shatner. We don't do impressions very well on the okay. show. We've, we've found this out, man. All right, you, you passed the test. That's all but the what association. If Christopher Walken, what if Christopher Walken was in Jurassic Park? <laughs> These are all oh, callbacks. No. A T Rex. <laughs> it's gonna eat me. <laughs> I play ping pong. Yeah. <laughs> That's not in Jurassic Park. I, I already see I'm gonna have to join you guys here pretty soon again. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is oh, a yes. Lot of fun. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right, let's see. We've got just a few more things. Uh, craft beer dad joke. Craft beer dad joke of the month. Brought to you by Ryan. All right. Is it okay if I use your beer? Sure. All right. So, in my craft beer dad joke world, there's one bar where all the animals go to. And so one day, a hare hops into this bar. You know, a hare like a bunny rabbit. And so he goes up, and uh, the bartender, who's not afraid of talking animals anymore, since he's so used to them, said, uh... Hey, what can I get you? And the hare says, um, I'll take a brackish, brack yard ale. And the bartender says, Sure, but why the long pause? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's not uh, terrible. It's a dad joke. Terrible. You got the, the, the joke, the pun, everything. Yeah, it all works together. One. It's, a, it's like, hard enough to make bad jokes, but then you have to fit them to craft beer? Come yes. On. One a month Ooh. is all I can think of. <laughs> that means now you have to have a theme of not only finding silly dad jokes, but they all have to be about animals going to this guy's bar since he decided to call back last month's dad joke. That's true. There could be a pirate that goes to the bar, too. I got a joke about that. Maybe I'll save that for next month, <laughs> which is going to be like pretty soon. Speaking of which, what oh, is yeah. our next? Uh, what is our next? Um, so our next podcast, uh, live podcast is podcast. coming up actually really soon on June fourth, which happens to be my birthday. Um, Happy birthday! Thanks. But I'll probably hang on to the recording and release it later, so we don't put out a couple podcasts back to back with. Armadillo Brewing Company. Have from you heard of them? Kingsland, Georgia. You know, I I have. I mean, I've 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 heard some talk about it, but I I to tell you the truth, I think I they're know absolutely nothing. Just about on it. the yeah. Just starting to plant. just starting there. You okay. know, you're yeah. you're a uh, yeah. You're I've there, seen, and uh, they're just starting. Yeah, but. I've seen some things on Facebook, and I've I've heard some people talking about it, but I I mean I have. You know, we've been pretty busy with our own thing and yeah. couldn't tell you much about it. We're what excited to meet them and, yeah. and, and we hope they bring uh, beer as, as fantastic as you have shared with us. And, oh, great, uh, great. And uh, uh, where can we find you on social media? I know you mentioned your Facebook is your primary place. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, Karen, can you feed through the uh, live feed here and tell me? She's... I'm terrible with social media. So if that's uh, her, uh, <laughs> she can't talk. Somebody uh, earlier. Or if there's like, another uh, Karen out there listening. Yes, I think I think that's the the main ones. Right okay. Now. And of course, what, our, our what's our famous phrase? Just Google just it. Google it. Brackish Beer yeah. Company. And uh, there's only one. Yeah, and we um, 
Uh, we do have a, a presence on Rate Beer. Very good. And uh, on uh, Untapped. Very good. So if you are sampling our beer anywhere at a, either a verified venue or any venue that you want to stick into uh, into Untapped, uh, please do so uh, because those are the types of things that they make our beer better when we get feedback. And uh, yeah, Untapped, rate beer. Please, please let us know what you think of the beer. Awesome. And if you are in Valdosta, where I know a lot, a lot of our listeners are, go out, find some Brackyard Ale. It's going to be all around here. We know it's already at Craft on Draft, a few other places, but it will be worth your while, and you'll be supporting legitimately George, South Georgia's first this is, brewery. This uh, is as local as it gets. How far away is St. Mary's from here? Uh, two hours. Two hours. Mm-hmm. So still not quite the closest brewery to us because of Tallahassee. Okay. Closest, okay. Probably, probably but closest definitely the closest Georgia, Georgia brewery. Georgia, closest Georgia definitely. brewery. For yeah. sure. Closer than Macon? I Ooh. think... Make it be close. I think when, certainly I by think, miles. Or I think when Statesboro. We, I think when we went to Macon, it was Statesboro, more than two Eagle hours. Creek, in Statesboro. I think Statesboro is probably about two hours too. Okay, so we're about. But uh, I have no clue. But you're definitely the most southern. Southern, yes. yes. South, southeastern most uh, uh, brewery. Yep. So, but we in South Georgia. We're, we we're like begged them to. Uh, Statesboro is saying it's over three hours from here. Oh, okay. Uh, we begged them to get beer in Valdosta, so prove us right and go drink it, people. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That way we can get the pale ale and the pecan. What about our Excellent. social media? Yes, find us online. Everything is Hansa Brew. Of course, we get the most interactions on Facebook as well, but we also have Twitter, Instagram, uh, and you can find our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher. Google Play. We're hosted on Podcast Garden, but I'm sure nobody listens there directly. iTunes is by far the most popular, I think. And uh, hit us up anytime. Send us messages, suggestions, people you want us to talk to. We do get messages occasionally, and we always respond. Somebody said anti-brewum online. Anti-brewum! Woo! Um, the other thing about particularly Facebook, we try to send out anytime we see any sort of beer-related news, uh, events, stuff events. like that. Because we only podcast once a month, it's easier to just for us to send them out on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook and like us and follow us, that's a good way of learning about what's happening. You know, there's a craft beer tasting tonight at Red Door that we posted about. We talked about Buzzer. He's got that special meat on. Uh, as Brackish does events, we're going to, po- you know, we're yeah. trying to kind of Arm- expand Arm- out. Armadillo, our, our guest next yeah. month, did, so, did a tasting. But that's, recently. you know, we want to talk about all that on air, but usually... With the gaps in time, it's easier for us to post it. So that's another reason you should follow us is it kind of keeps you up to date about what's going on as well as following everybody else on on Instagram. As always, especially with Memorial Day weekend or whenever you're listening, uh, fiesta responsibly. Don't drink and drive. Know your limits. Be cool. Uh, have fun, but make sure everybody is fun and safe. You know, it's important to us as we're pushing this stuff. But uh, make sure you are, um, you are being good. And thank you to uh, Five Points and Daniel Opal. Yeah. And Patreon subscribers. And thanks for John for coming all the way down. and, and, and uh, Cheers. 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 You guys are doing fantastic work. Thank you. Appreciate and, it. We appreciate uh, it. You know, it's all ground roots, organic growth. That's true. And uh, hopefully a year from now we'll be uh, toasting uh, yeah. newfound successes and different, different, different opportunities. Hey, you're welcome back anytime. We'd love to have you again. So Absolutely. Thank so. you. Thank you all and everybody out there in podcast land and video land. We'll see you very soon. Happy summer. Peace out. Cheers.